Hello, my name's Phil and I work for the Customer Services Department at the Hoselock Head Office in Birmingham. With over 50 years horticultural expertise, we at Hoselock understand the rewards of gardening and want to help you get the best from your garden. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the stages of how to remove the Aquaforce 1000 rotor from the pump. We're going to uh, check it over, make sure there's no excessive wear and then refit the rotor back to the pump and the pump back into the cage. You won't need any tools uh, at all to do this, it's all done by hand. So the first thing we need to do is take out the main electrical motor from inside the main cage. We do that by releasing these two clips on the cage here like that. We can then open the cage up. If you fitted this wildlife protection screen, which um, is an optional thing, you don't have to fit that, but if you have fitted that, you can just take that out, place it to one side. You can then see the electric motor with the cable running to it located into a boss inside the cage, but to remove it all you need to do is lift it out. Just um, lift the motor out and place the cage to one side until later. Now to get the uh, rotor assembly out we've, we then need to take the pump chamber off the end of the motor assembly. I haven't bothered to take all these um, connections off here for the, the hose going to the, uh, the filter. Uh, you don't need to do that. All you need to do to take the rotor out is locate this moulding on the end with the two tabs on it. Just rotate that moulding anti-clockwise until it releases the latches. You can then take that pump chamber off. Just be careful when you do take it off, sometimes the, uh, the bearing at the front of the motor is retained in the front of the pump chamber like so. So you just need to make sure that you're aware of that. To get the rotor assembly out, and this is the rotor here with these six blades on, we just need to carefully pull the whole assembly from inside the pump. The shaft actually stays in place if sometimes, so it doesn't necessarily come out every time but sometimes it does. But you can pull it out if you want to check the shaft as well for wear and you'll see the little retaining bearing and thrust washer on the end of the shaft. You're just checking inside the pump just to make sure there's no debris in there and then we can check the rotor assembly for signs of wear and um, problems with the rotor. We're going to check the blades to make sure that the rotor blades aren't worn or broken or any of them missing and also check the magnet which is this dark grey coloured component here make sure there's no deep score marks or deep scratches in that which will impede the operation of the pump light scratching and uh, uh, light surface marks are usually quite acceptable it's just deep scoring that we need to be aware of we're also going to check the shaft to make sure that that's not got any signs of deep score or wearing in it. Uh, so it should be a nice cylindrical shape, about the diameter of a, a, a lead in a lead pencil. So just run our fingers up that, make sure there's no problems with that. If that's all okay, we can refit that back into the rotor. So that should just go straight the way through the middle of the rotor like that and there should be a little white bearing on each end. The end of the shaft will then go into the other bearing that's still located in the front of the pump chamber. So to assemble that we need to get that bearing out and I'm just using the shaft to gently tease the bearing out of the pump chamber um, because we don't want to refit it with the bearing still in there, we want to refit it as an assembly such as this which is what you, uh, you would normally do. With the, with the assembly all uh, checked and uh, ready to go back in, it's just a case of putting the assembly back into the motor and pushing firmly to make sure that the bottom uh, rubber bearing is secured into its little recess in the bottom. And the final part is to refit this pump chamber back onto the end of the motor. And at the same time, making sure that this bearing at the other end of the shaft locates into the central hole in the pump chamber. I've just pushed the pump chamber back on and made sure that the lugs on the pump chamber here and here are clear of these little latches 
that are going to be used to secure the pump chamber to stop it coming off. So you should be able to rotate the pump chamber until it lies nice and flat against the front of the motor and you'll know then that it's in the correct position to be locked into place. So I've twisted the pump chamber clockwise now and located the two latches under the two lugs on the pump chamber so that means that the pump chamber can't now come adrift and fall off. So that's the pump chamber securely fastened back onto the pump. The last thing we need to do now is just refit re the motor assembly back into the cage, so we'll do that now. So remembering where we uh, took the motor from, we just put it back in exactly the same place. The square shape of the motor fits into this square boss and this little half moon shape there receives the outlet um, assembly coming from the pump and running up to the, uh, the filter. Making sure that the cable goes through the little cutout in the cage there that's uh, designed to let the cable pass through without getting trapped. And then we're going to refit the wildlife protection screen if we use that facility. And finally we close the cage up, push it firmly together and click the two clicks back into place. And that's it, we've taken the rotor out, checked it and refitted it back into the pump. That's it. Job done.